Good evening and welcome to our Maundy Thursday service. Uh, I'm recording this in advance so I can record it um, in, in an evening uh, when this would kind of typically be taking place in the church with much more subdued lighting, uh, I suppose a bit more atmospheric uh, as best as we can. Um, for it is um, a moment of reflection, um, a service of humility, uh, a service of serving one another, uh, a service that uh, interestingly throughout probably all the services in the church calendar, um, I really value um, for a variety of different reasons um, and one or two I'll share throughout the service I'm sure. But welcome to our Maundy Thursday service. Uh, we have our uh, disciples with us. Um, if I count them, I do have 12 uh, with us gathered here. Um, so it's great to have our congregation in one sense, but actually our church family. You're my church family who are gathering with me in this moment, uh, virtually, via YouTube or whatever mechanism. We're family and we're gathered together. So welcome uh, into my home. Uh, welcome into this service. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. So let us come before God in this moment and say sorry. Sorry for the things that we've said that we know in our hearts we should never have said. Sorry for those thoughts that we've had and we've allowed to fester that we know are wrong and we should have dismissed. Sorry for the actions that we've done that we know cause somebody else hurt. So let us come before a loving, gracious and generous God and say sorry. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. So let us hold a moment of silence to allow the Holy Spirit to bring to our hearts and our minds those things for which we are to say sorry for. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. So may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all of our days. Amen. So our prayer is set for this evening. So may we pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord, Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, O Christ, 
King of eternal glory. So let us hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet, for their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I had done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord. And rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I wash one another's feet, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them.
I wrote just the other day a few very short and simple kind of, I guess, reflections around Monday Thursday. Um, I, I said at the start this was one of those services that I, I truly love. And the reason why I do, and if you've come to a Monday Thursday service before, you'll have heard me say these words or similar words. Most of the time, I guess, in what I do as, as priest, as vicar, as rector, whatever title you want to give, I, I guess I'm seen as some sort of figurehead, some sort of leader of, of a, of a worshipping community, which is, which is what I am. Um, but I'm also a deacon. I'm also a, a servant. And what I do value and cherish in the Anglican tradition is that actually at my licensing, when I'm ordained, I'm ordained a deacon first, a servant first. And after a year, you're then licensed a priest. But you're never not a deacon. You always remain a deacon. And sometimes in, I guess, ministry and in leadership, we can forget, if we're not careful, that we're always servants first and foremost. Uh, and sometimes I don't get the opportunity to be a servant in, in a very obvious way. But actually, Monday Thursday is traditionally when I take the opportunity to wash the feet, to wash your feet of my congregation, of my family, of my community. And I'm very happy, you know, kind of washing feet that are smelly and maybe with corns and just they are what they are and actually there's a real privilege in doing that act of ministry to you and i'd have the opportunity this time around to do that and if you're with us last year and um, obviously myself and the two tracys we did that ministry of washing the the feet of those who were comfortable for us to do that uh, and we talked beforehand uh, at that service how wonderful it would be if somehow we could have the congregation, as it was then, wash one another's feet. That, that would be a real symbol and a, a real truth of actually that reading from Matthew that we've heard read, where actually it says you do likewise to one another, having just had the example of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And what I've loved in many respects about this new season that we find ourselves in is actually that serving of one another through phone calls, through generosity of kindness. And it's not quite like we're washing each other's feet because we can't physically do that. But there is something of that heart behind that. So that's one of the reasons I love this service. I get to be servants in a very tangible and real way to you as my church family and there are some other very just short reflections that i wrote around this that i just want to read um, and share with you god has made us free to serve we have nothing to prove to jesus to win his approval were already approved. We have nothing to prove to one another. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're a family. We have nothing to prove to the world because we are secure in who Christ has made us to be. We have nothing to prove to ourselves for Jesus accepts us just as we are. We are children of God's. And because we're approved in a church family, secure in Christ, accepted just as we are, and as children of the Lord Most High, then we are free, free to serve, free to sing, free to pray, free to dance, free to give away all that we have, free to love without fear, free to be ourselves as God intended, and free to serve. 
to serve the King of Kings, to serve the Lord of Lords, to serve our brothers and sisters in Christ, to serve the stranger in the streets, to serve our neighbour, just as we would wish to be served. Yes, we are free. You see, on that night when Jesus had supper with those closest to him, he did more than just have a meal. He did more than just wash their feet. He did more than set them a pattern to remember what Jesus was about to do. He did so much more. He showed them who he was. Not just a rabbi, not just a teacher, not just a friend, but a servant in the form of a king. A servant so confident in his identity, so confident in his eternal home, so confident in the love of the Father, so confident in the friends sat around him by the one, that he could take off his outer clothes, he could kneel at the feet of his friends, he could wash their feet, because this was an expression of his love for them, a model for them to show their love for each other. In God's economy, we are all called to be servants. And when we come to realise this, that as servants, we serve the king, that we know we are secure to serve one another, not expecting any reward, because we do what we do for the king, not to win favour, because we're already his favourite, but to serve others like we have been served by him. Jesus, I take off my own shoes. I take off my own socks. And I present to you my feet, my heart, my all. Wash me and wash me clean. Renew me again, Lord, by your spirit. Renew me by your love. And let me see myself as you see me, a servant, loved, chosen and accepted by you. Now let me go and do likewise to a world that needs to see a church washing its dirty, downtrodden feet. Let me go to the broken hearted, because I once was broken hearted. But you, Lord, healed and restored me. Let me restore and heal those who are broken in this world, not with my love, but with yours. He who the Lord sets free is free indeed. Free to sing, free to pray, free to dance, free to give away all that we have, free to love without fear, free to be myself as God intended, and free to serve. Serve the King of Kings, serve the Lord of Lords, serve my brothers and sisters in Christ, serve the stranger in the streets, serve my neighbour, just as we would wish to be served. Yes, I am free. Amen.
normally in this moment and um, I'll be going around the room and washing feet um, obviously I, I can't do that um, in reality but of course I do it in one sense in my heart hopefully in what I shared in my address you picked up something of that sense of me as your leader yes but actually as a servant serving you washing your feet that actually you might then do likewise one to another so may we pray Let's take a short time to pray quietly. Dear God, we are sorry for all the wrong things we do. Thank you that Jesus gave his body and blood to take the punishment for those wrong things. Please help us to be good and to look, to look after other people. Thank you for everyone who is looking after people who are ill or in hospital at the moment. They are doing what Jesus did at the Last Supper. Please keep them all safe and well. Amen. The power of the Spirit. Let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Saviour of the world. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. So let's just pause for a moment as we bring before Christ people, places, situations, circumstances of which we wish to pray. Loving and gracious Lord, we offer all these our prayers before you. Thank you that you receive them. Amen. So Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. It may be that actually if you're gathered together as a family watching this video that you then offer peace to one another as well. So we have a very simple uh, communion table that is set. I'm just going to pour a little bit of wine.
One of the things I think we are all missing while we're trying so hard to keep people safe from this virus is a special celebration meal. It was Mothering Sunday a little while ago. It will be Easter soon and I know lots of you will be missing birthday parties at the moment. Today's story is about a special meal for Jesus and his friends where some unusual things happened. We now call it the Last Supper. Let's find out what went on. It was Passover, a big celebration for the Jews. Jesus and his disciples arrived for the special meal. During the meal, Jesus did another strange thing. He took the bread from the table, held it up to give thanks to God and broke it. Jesus shared the bread with his disciples and said to them, This bread is like my body, given for you. After the meal, he took the cup of wine and said, This wine is like my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus was telling the disciples what was about to happen. His body was going to be broken and his blood was going to flow out. But he was also telling them why. It was going to happen for them and in fact, all of us. At the Eucharist, we are with our crucified and risen Lord. We know that it was not only our ancestors, but we who were redeemed and brought forth from bondage to freedom, from mourning to feasting. We know that as he was with them in the upper room, so our Lord is here with us now. Until the kingdom of God comes, let us celebrate this feast. So may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, for we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, for it is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and with all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. And on the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and, taking the bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit, as we bring before you these gifts of your creation, may they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. 
And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land and reveal her unity, guard her faith and preserve her in peace. And bring us, at the last, with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour, glory and power, be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So every time, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again in glory. So we gather together in a spiritual communion where I will receive the bread and the wine, kind of, if you like, on our behalf. But we gather together spiritually as one church, one family, with Jesus Christ, our Saviour. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. For the table is laid, and Christ is here, waiting for you to join him, waiting for you to receive his gifts, and waiting to bless you. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption, for you are alive and reign now and for ever. Amen. What would typically happen now in this service is we would strip uh, the sanctuary and we would take away all the trimmings and furnishings from kind of around the church and around the altar and communion table uh, and it becomes bare uh, in a very kind of symbolic way in which Christ became bare and gave up everything for us. Um, as you can appreciate, it's not quite the same really doing that in this setting. Uh, there's not a lot to strip away in some respects. So I'm going to just dim out the lights and then just leave this video to kind of play for just a minute or two for you to pause and to reflect. And then I'm going to come and blow out the candles one by one. Bless you. Thank you for joining. And may you be pray may you be blessed in these coming days. Amen.